what up what up what up what up what's going on guys what's going on what's going on it took me a minute to get things together so sorry about that i'm a little bit late starting out this morning but we are here so uh this morning i uh, just want to make sure that we let you know that we thank you for being in the house this morning being uh being a part of the men in pursuit group uh great things are happening good morning good morning good morning good morning Good morning, men in pursuit. So a uh, couple of things that we want to dive into this morning and uh, uh, just happy to be in the house. And I've already gotten a couple of prayer requests. Let me see real quickly, if you don't mind, I'm going to look again at my um, at my post and see if uh, there are any more that came in. And I'll write those down real quickly so that we can go ahead and we can get get started. I see. Let's see. Okay. All right. All right. So this morning uh, I got a couple prayer requests. We'll 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 put those before the Lord. We're going to believe that the Lord is going to um is going to move in behalf of every prayer request that we have. Uh let's see if I can do this right here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so and I believe that the Lord is going to do that for us. Um, the Bible says that he who hath begun a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And uh, just want to make sure that you uh, that I'm still uh, if you still have prayer requests or whatever, I still will receive your prayer request right there at that on that post. So make sure that you send those and uh, make sure that we get those. And I'll look at them from time to time and we'll make sure that we put them towards what it is that we are trying to uh, pray for this morning. Also, um, uh, this morning, want to make sure that you uh, that you are uh, with us as we get ready to uh, go on in September the 30th. Uh, just a great, great, great time we're expecting in the Lord uh, down in Monroe, Georgia. That place is located at 714 Davis Street in Monroe, Georgia. So we want you to be a part of that. That'll be a time that we men gather together. We've been doing it quarterly, so it'll be a little bit. Uh, uh, this will be, I think, the third gathering. So please make sure that you're there. I've already got a couple of friends. Please excuse me. Uh, my trip uh, to Ghana just kind of uh, hindered a little bit of a few things, but Still, you know, we're expecting that God is going to do uh, mighty things uh, where that is concerned. So um, please make sure that you are abreast of that, attuned to that. And we're believing that the Lord is going to touch you uh, as you come and be a part of that. So what's up, Rodney? So good to see you up in the house this morning, man. Uh, excited about you being with us this morning. Let me see who else we got up in the house. Thank you, Lord. Ron, thank you so much again for being in the house this morning. So Rodney and Ron are in the house, and we're expecting a few more to come in as the uh, as the minutes pass by and um, expecting for great, great things to transpire. I do have just a little bit that I want to say to you this morning before we uh, before we um, before we get started. Hey, don't forget, I am, and if you don't know, I am Pastor Don Clark. Uh, for those that may catch the broadcast on a little bit later on, and we are here. We are here in this particular place so that we can help men on their journey of transporta tra transportation, no, transformation, on their journey of transformation. And it is our desire to see men transformed by the word, transformed through prayer, transformed by fasting. So we expect that as we together begin to join with you in the uh, in the process of going through the word, through prayer, and then through fasting, that we're going to see you transform into what it is that God has called you to be. So please, please, please make sure that even now that you share uh, this group with somebody, let them know, hey, they are in the house. And then we have a little bit of an experiment going on. We are simultaneously broadcasting on YouTube. So I want to make sure that all the people on YouTube, make sure that they like, make sure that they 
uh, subscribe, make sure that they follow, all those kinds of things. Now, uh, I'm going to look at the video a little bit later. The one yesterday didn't turn out, uh, it didn't look as good as I wanted it to look. And uh, so I've got some, we've got some things to do um, related to how our videos are looking, but that's okay where we are starting. Uh, we despise not the day of small beginnings. We believe that God is going to complete that which he's called us to do and uh, that our latter end will be greater uh, than our former. So we're expecting for God to increase that more and more. Don't forget about... Um, uh, so you uh, don't forget about this coming Friday. This coming Friday is we are going to fast. We're going to fast. And I know that I've missed some days when I was away uh, in Ghana. Uh, I know you were probably fasting by yourself. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I I, uh, I didn't know what I was going to be eating when I was in Ghana. So <laughs> whenever, whenever an opportunity came to eat something that I thought was uh, going to be pleasing. Uh, I just ate it. So please make sure that you don't fault me because of that. But uh, but uh, great time in Ghana. And then to my surprise, almost almost all of the food that I ate there, especially the food that I ate uh, at Pastor uh, Pastor Albert's house and um, with his family, all of it was great. And then you know some of the places that we visited while we were there, that food might not have been as good as what they were having at their house. But a great time, nevertheless. Great time, nevertheless. So uh, this morning we want to welcome uh, we want to welcome some new members. Uh, those of you who have just joined, I noticed on yesterday we we got a couple of new members. One of them um, uh, is a friend of mine who uh, actually is using his wife's account. So don't be startled by the fact that you see that. Uh, but we want to make sure that he has um, at least an opportunity to pop in and to receive what the Lord is saying to him this morning. So this morning we are continuing to talk about we're taking we're continuing to talk about transformation. And this morning is part two of that particular uh, that particular um, series of conversations that we are having. And we are expecting that God is going to transform up transform us. And then not only that, put us in places where we can be transformed. So this morning, we are excited about what the Lord is going to do. We're excited about how he has already begun the transformation process in us. In fact, this particular uh, platform here is a, uh, what's going on, my man, my man, Rashad, what is up up in the house? We're glad you're up in the house this morning. So you are just in time. We are just getting ready to bounce off into this scripture real, real quick. And I don't think I'm going to be too long, but I just, I do want to share it with you this morning. And we started on yesterday talking out of Romans chapter Romans chapter 12, verse number two, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And what we talked about on yesterday was the fact that when we recognize that the writer of a particular passage writes that passage, he has a particular group of people in mind of whom he is trying to get a message across to. So what uh, uh, what I've found now is that uh, many times uh, the writer recognizes the deficit in the lives of those that he is speaking to. Therefore, because of the deficit they have, he wants to address the deficit. So in turn, if the Lord then is uh, is having me to talk about it or is having your pastor to talk about it or somebody else that you know to talk about it, then also the Lord recognizes that there is then a deficit in your life where this is concerned. So there is a need then for us to find places of transformation or either just to recognize we can be transformed. So there are many of us that begin to think that we're in a rut, we're caught in this rut, we got to be right here all the time. Therefore, you know, my life is pretty much over. I will never change. But right here in Romans 12 and 2, it says that there are two streams of information that are coming to us that causes transformation to take place in our lives. And one particular stream, it says, be not conformed to this world. So there's a stream of information, or you can say 
it like this, a stream of influence that is proceeding push to you to cause you to be transformed in the image of the world. In other words, uh, in other words, every form of uh, every form of information or influence will begin to change you into something. So we are being changed. We are being changed into either what God desires for us to be or either we are being changed into the thing that uh, the world wants us to be. So uh, inadvertently, when we go out into this world, there's information that begins to push against us, begin to push against who we are, begin to push against where we want to go. And then it will either affect us us positively or negatively. And when we're talking about the world system, in most cases, it is going to impact us negatively. So what we found out is that if we then begin to, uh, if we begin to set the agenda for uh, the areas or the atmospheres of transformation, then we can be changed into what the Lord desires for us to be. Yesterday we talked about, and I was trying to see if I put those, if I wrote those things down, the points down from yesterday. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if I wrote those things down. Did I write them down? Did I write them down? Did I write them down? Ooh, ooh, I did not write them down. What is going on with me? Oh my goodness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this means that we might have to just jump off into what it is that we are talking about today. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's go forward. So, uh, so what are we, what are we talking about today? We're talking about, uh, since since we recognize that God is talking about transformation, then he talks about the mode by which we can be transformed. He says that by the renewing of our mind, we can be transformed or that we can be conformed to this world. So conforming to something is a, is a, is almost like a backwards transformation. So, uh, so it, we are at a place uh, the world system is going a particular place, and then uh, the the what we find as a place of comfort, we begin to migrate back to that place. Transformation is pushing into what it is that God desires for us to be, and we uh, we we declared on yesterday that transformation was this: that transformation is the process. Transformation is the process of being changed because of your interaction with a stronger influence, with a stronger influence. Now, no, no, you need to make sure that you understand that so that whenever you get in the presence of something that is uh, it is is uh, is stronger than you or or uh, uh that is bigger than you, there's the possibility that you can be transformed, that change can happen in your life. And what we do is we recognize that uh, that we want to transform into what God desires for us to be. Therefore, we put ourselves in the position where we can be transformed. So uh, this morning, what we want to talk about this morning, what we want to talk about, we want to talk about Galatians chapter one. And I'm going to read this scripture to you. It was so long that I did not uh, that I did not want to um, that I did not want to uh, I did not want to put it on the screen. So we're talking about Galatians chapter one, Galatians chapter one. I hope you are there. Galatians chapter one. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter one, Galatians chapter one. I think I'm going to start reading at verse number 10. Galatians chapter one. For for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men? For I yet please men and I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached unto me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what the writer wants us to know, what the apostle wants us to know is that, listen, I got something. I know you recognize the word that I'm preaching, but listen, I didn't get this word from no man. 
I didn't get this word from something that I think. I didn't get this word from something that somebody else told me. I got this word from Jesus Christ. Now, why is that significant? That is significant because Jesus, he is saying, is the one that has influenced him. He's saying that I've come to this place that I am. You marvel at the way that I preach. You marvel at the knowledge that I have. You marvel at the thing that I'm saying, but I did not get this because I'm just great or because I know a lot. I got this from Jesus. Now, what he's going to reveal to us is he's going to reveal to us how he actually received this information from the Lord. And I'm telling you, we're talking about this because we're talking about atmospheres of transformation. We're talking about how is it that we are transformed? And I'm saying that I've already told you that there were two streams of information that begin to come to us. And now what the apostle here is saying is that there was, there, there was for me, what I did is I received this information from Jesus and it transformed me to from, to, from what I was and then to where I am right now. And so what we see in verse number 13 and 14 he begins to relate to us what he actually was. Verse number 13, he says, for you have heard of my conversation or my manner of life in times past uh, in the Jews religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church and I, I wasted it and I profited in the Jews religion above many, my equals and my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. Now notice what he says. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up into Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and turned again to Damascus. And then after three years, now notice, what he did was he found and he began to isolate. He began to isolate himself, right? So that he can begin to receive from the spirit of the Lord. So he uses a word. He says that he separated me. That word separated means to mark off, to uh, set boundaries around, right? To set apart. So in other words, what he did was uh, God began to move him from the place of all these other influences. Remember what we talked about? That if you're going to be transformed, you're going to be influenced by something, right? And so what he does is that he doesn't want the influence of the apostles that have gone before him. He doesn't want the influence of the people whom he's around. So what he does is he goes up to Arabia where he can begin be in a place of isolation where the Lord can begin to speak with him to make him who it is that God desires for him to be. So... <laughs> So, so what he does is he does this. He finds an atmosphere of transformation, an atmosphere of transformation. Well, what am I saying to you? I am saying this to you, that I know that God has called you to be something. I know that there is a destination for your life. I know that God is causing your life to begin to move in a certain way. But what God is also letting us know is that you've got to find uh, atmospheres that are conducive to you being transformed into who it is that God has called you to be. So the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the new renewing of your mind. So that means that in the atmosphere of the world, when you are just receiving, receiving all this information that comes from uh, the internet, that comes from movies, that come from people that are all around you, that comes from, you know, things that you see on the street when you go out, that that stuff begins to cause you to conform to the world's way of doing things. And it, Things and it does not cause you to conform into what God has called you to be. And what God is saying is that is that is that uh, is that He wants you to be a particular thing. So there is a destination that God is desiring. Now, hold on. I need to give you just a few things just before we go ahead and get into this. 
So we need to find out what is it that we are transformed into. Ephesians 4, and which I'll read a little bit later on, Ephesians 4 says, that we are, uh, that, that, that God gave the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all, so he says, uh, till, till we all come in the unity of the faith unto the perfect and mature man to the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. So what we find out is that God wants to cause in us that the body be unified, uh, 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 Rashad, that the body be unified, uh, or no, uh, Ron, that the body be unified, and then also that we become uh, to the place that we begin to look like and act like Jesus. So what God wants us to do is God wants us to grow up to look like Jesus Christ. So these atmospheres, right, these atmospheres that are created, they should have like about four or five things. Let me give them to you. Number one, they should have an influencer. They should have some information. They should have some person. They should have some culture. They should have some influence that causes you to become who it is that you're supposed to be. Number two, according to the apostle Paul, that there's a necessity for isolation. In other words, you're not gonna be around everybody hearing all the opinions that everybody has, but you're gonna be receiving information. It's gonna be isolated so that the influencer has your full attention. Number three, number three, he's, uh, uh, it, it needs, it, it requires a, a place as a, Places of transformation requires your commitment. So in other words, when you get there, you're going to have to be committed to the process that they bring to you in order for transformation to take place. Number four, you got to be hungry. Ah, my goodness. You got to be hungry for what it is that God wants to do in your life. You got to be hungry, hungry, hungry. It's got to be to the point where you're saying, you know what? I want this so badly that whatever is necessary for me to do, I will do it. God, whatever you say do, I'll do it. So you got to be hungry. And then lastly, you've got to make some sacrifice. We're talking about areas, right? Uh, uh, areas, atmospheres of transformation, atmospheres of transformation. So, uh, so now one of the things, and I talked about this, uh, uh, and maybe, maybe I did, uh, uh yeah. All right. So, uh, so every atmosphere has, uh, has influencers. It has an influencer. It has an influencer. So somebody's got to be giving you, uh, giving you information. Uh, every atmosphere of transformation must have an influencer. Number two, number two, every atmosphere of transformation must have an agenda. It must have, in other words, they're not just coming haphazardly talking to you, or you're not just getting in there, just reading a whole bunch of information, but they have a destination that they are trying to bring you to. So we, we, we're, we're not going in thinking, oh my God, you know, we don't know where it is that we want to go. No, 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 no. When you come into the atmosphere of transformation, the atmosphere of transformation already has a place it, uh, that it desires for you to go. Number three, every good uh, atmosphere of trans transformation because of the agenda will then have a culture, will then have a culture. There is something about uh, that uh, atmosphere. Everybody begins to look the same. Everybody begins to talk the same. Everybody begins to walk the same. They have the same air about them. I've gone to churches where you go into the churches and the people at that place have a certain air about them, right? If you're talking about a, if you're talking about a school, uh, the school has a certain culture. The people dress a certain way within the culture. All right. Then also that place of that place of uh, transformation. Transformation, the atmosphere of transformation must have pressure. It will have rigor. In other words, it will have things that press against what you consider to be beyond the place that you can go. It will cause you, 
right? To have uh, have concerns about, I don't even know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to get through it. But, but the pressure begins to bring out of you and chip away at the thing that God desires for you to be. It begins to bring it out of you. Number, uh, number, is that number three? Number seven, four. Number five, it has isolation. So it's going to take you away from where it is that, uh, uh, that that you kind of you know think that you you know uh, that 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 you ought to be out in the open where everybody else is. So let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about these atmospheres of transformation real quick, real, real quick. Let's talk about these atmospheres of transformation. Let, look, there are schools. Schools are an atmosphere of transformation. When people go into college, they are not doctors. No. What they do is they they submerge them into an atmosphere where the communication and the conversation is about doctoring, is about being a physician, is about the method of being the physician, about the philosophy of being physician. And they submerge people in that particular information so that on the other end, they can come out and become doctors. So there are schools. Uh, there are schools that are atmospheres of transformation. There are churches that are atmospheres of uh, of transformation. That's why. Uh, that's why uh, some churches are prophetic churches. Some churches are, you know, uh, you, you would call. Some people might call them word based churches. Some churches are deliverance churches. Some churches are, you know, are worship churches where the majority of the things that you uh, that is. Uh, that is pronounced to the people that are there is about worship. So they got all of these places. And what you do when you run into one of the people that are in that kind of place, you recognize that those are the things that they think are important. So it's not that they are the most important, but because they are there in that place, and that is the rigor of that place, that is the thing that that place teaches, those people begin to resemble what is there in that place. So there are schools that are atmospheres of transformation. There are churches that are atmospheres of transformation. There are clubs, right, that are atmospheres of transformation, right? You got tennis clubs and you got, you know, uh, you got, uh, uh, they got, uh, I don't know, you got, you got, you got uh, chess clubs and, and all of these things begin to, to submerge you into um into atmospheres that cause you to be a better chess player or a better student or to become a doctor or to become a worshiper or to become a deliverance person, a person that causes deliverance to come into those that are bound. And then one of the other areas of transformation is the fact that uh, of your, your friends. So you don't want to have no friends that are not influential. <laughs> If they are not influential in your life, if they cannot influence you to be better, come on now. If they are allowing you to migrate back into your, uh, what do you call it, into your uh, lackadaisicalness or your uh, uh, your mediocrity or, or whatever it is, if they allow you to migrate back into that place, then you need to get you some new friends. You need to get you some friends that will begin to cause rigor to come into your life. So, so these are atmospheres of transformation. And what I want you to understand is that the way that the apostle dealt with this situation, he noticed in verse number, uh, notice when in verse number 15 of Galatians chapter one, he says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, and call me by his grace to reveal his son in me uh, uh, that I might preach among the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up into Jerusalem, which were apostles before me, but I went up into Arabia. So what he did was when he recognized that God wanted to do something in him, he, saw, he began to seek out atmospheres of transformation. So what is it that God is trying to call you to be? That's my question to you. Is it 
that you're called to be a prophet? Is it that you're called to be a pastor? Is it that you're called to be a worship leader? Is it that you're called to be, uh, you know, a teacher? Is it that you are called to be a doctor or a lawyer? See, so whatever it is that you're called to be, then you need to begin to seek out atmospheres that begin to cultivate that gifting on the inside of you. And that is what atmospheres of transformation do. It cultivates. There is already a gifting on the inside of you. There's already something that God has uh, has done on the inside of you concerning your gifting. But what has to happen is you got to get in an atmosphere that will cultivate you. <laughs> so let me give you these four things, five things, and then I think I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Let me give you these five things, and I think I'm going to be quiet. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. So let me give you these five things. Then I think I'm going to, we're going to go out and we're going to begin to pray. And I've already been long, but it's okay. I think I'm going to do this every once in a while. Number one. When you begin to recognize what we saw, what the apostle did here in Galatians, when you begin to recognize, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to go off these notes instead of my notes. So atmospheres of transformation must be tailored by the influencer. I'm talking about, so I'm saying that you're looking for atmospheres that will cause you to become who it is that God desires for you to be, right? Now, what I'm saying is that you can't go into those atmospheres and dictate what is being done or what is being said because these places should already have a track record of producing what it is that you are desiring to be. And if that is the case, and they have a proven record of producing prophets, or they have a proven record of producing teachers, or they have a proven record of producing lawyers, or they have a proven record of producing doctors. You can't go in with the understanding that you have and uh, has not been cultivated yet and tell these, tell the people or the influencers how it is that you need to be influenced. So what has to happen is that the atmosphere must be tailored by the one that is doing the influencing. Number two, when you recognize that there is a call to go higher, right? The call to go higher is an indication that you need an atmosphere of influence or an atmosphere of transformation. So what you what you what you understand is that oh I believe that I'm called I believe that I'm supposed to be this I believe that I'm supposed to go in this direction but if you uh uh if if uh uh if uh if you don't get in an atmosphere of transformation then change will not come it'll just be the idea that I believe that I'm supposed to do this. And what will happen is that the gifting that is on the inside of you will lie dormant for years. So what you got to do is you've got to get in the atmosphere. You got to get in the atmosphere of transformation. So when the call comes or the desire comes to be a doctor or the call comes to be a preacher or whatever it is, you got to get in the atmosphere of transformation. Number three. Number three, I'm giving you these and then I'm going to be done. I think, I think I'm going to be done. The atmosphere of change must not have competing streams of information. So you can't go into an atmosphere of change and have one stream of information saying, oh, this is the direction that you ought to go. This is what it's going to take for you to do this. This is what it's going to take for you to be this. And then have another stream of information coming that says, no, 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 no. Uh, what they're saying to you is a lie. 
what they're saying to you is not the truth. You don't have to do all that. That's not the way that you should go. So you can't have two competing streams of information because if you do, it'll prolong you becoming who it is that God is trying to transform you into. Number, number four, number four. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. In the microwave society that we're in right now, in the place that we're, everybody, and you know this like I know it, prophets are popping up like popcorn, right? All these people that, Bishops and all these folks like that, they are just popping up all over the place like popcorn. They are coming from everywhere. And what I'm finding out is that many of them have not gone through the rigor of, uh, that is necessary for them to be or to be talked about, to be called who they say that they are. And so what happens is this, is that, is that for, for us, most of the time, in my, almost every situation, uh, the place of transformation or uh, you being in the atmosphere of transformation will take longer than you expected. It'll take longer than you expected because there are some things that are in you that take time to be worked out. That take time to be worked out. And what people don't like is people don't like to have to sit down when they think that the world is passing them by. Let the Lord do in you what he wants to do. Sit down and listen to the Lord. Sit yourself down somewhere. The last thing, and then I'm, I'm going to read a scripture and then we're going to pray. All atmospheres of transformation must have levels of isolation or have a level of isolation. In other words, there needs to be a place where you get alone with God and God begins to speak to you continually in such a way that you're only hearing from him, right? And these are times of isolation. Well, during that time, you're only getting what it is that he is desiring for you to get so that you become the thing that he's called you to be. Now, I said that I was going to read this scripture to you. So I'm going to go ahead and read this scripture to you. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to begin to pray. And it's over in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, a book that is familiar to you. So in us, you say, well, what is it we're being isolated for? Well, sure, sure, sure. Sure, you're being isolated because there might be a call on your life to become an apostle, a prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, or you're being isolated for the fact that you might be called to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever it is that you're called to be. So sure, you're isolated for those things, but ultimately what God desires and ultimately what we see in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse number the verse number Verse number 11 is this, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, to the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So what we begin to see right here that there are three things in that scripture in verse number 13, that, that this kind of isolation that especially for us, for you and I, we want to become like Christ. So first thing we see is that there is there is necessity of unity of the faith, right? And so everybody being on the same page concerning the faith of God. Then number two, and the knowledge of the Son of God. We all begin to recognize and begin feel, be filled with the knowledge of the Son of God. Then number three is that we grow up, that we begin to grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. So then as we do that, we'll begin to see that we are, uh, people will see us and they say, well, you just don't act the way that you used to act. Something has happened in your life. What is it that's going on with you? That is all because we have been in the atmosphere of transformation. So we want to make sure that we're seeking out those atmospheres that cause us to become who it is that God has desired for us to be. Yes, sir. Sit down and listen. 
Yes, sir. Sit down and listen in the secret place. So, um, uh, so today we're gonna go ahead and begin to pray. And I saw that uh, that Ron that you put uh, some information in about things that we need to be praying for. And then I'm gonna check this real quickly and see if there are any more prayer requests. And uh, I don't see any more, so we'll keep those prayer requests that we have. And then I have right here before me a couple of things that we want to make sure that we are praying about. So we're going to go ahead and begin to pray about those things. And we're going to believe that the Lord is going to uh, the Lord is going to minister to us concerning concerning these things. Yeah, yeah. I'm just checking, just checking a couple of things, just checking a couple of things. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's begin to pray. And then we'll pray and then believe that God is going to move in these areas and that uh, that that lives are going to be changed because of our prayers. Father, we thank you this morning and we honor you so because you are so good that your mercy endures forever. That God, that you're great, that you are marvelous, that there is none like you, Father. You are high and lifted up. God, that there is nothing above you. There is no God beside you. God, you are mighty and you are strong. God, we just give you praise this morning because of your goodness. You are good, God, that your mercy endures forever. We thank you for the way that you met us with your mercy. God, we thank you that uh, that you are uh, that you are powerful, God. That you uh, that you are uh, that that you are. Uh, that you're mighty, oh God, that you are mighty, oh God, that you are mighty, oh God, that you are glorious, that the train of your robe fills this temple, that God, that you set on high, that you are, that you are the great uh, that you are the great need meter, God. We thank you that you are El Shaddai. We give you praise, oh God, because you are the God that heals. That God, that you are the God that we uh, that, that 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 you are the God that that uh, stands above all. That God, we worship you even today for your goodness and for your mercy. We bless your name, oh God, for who you are. We thank you, God, this morning for uh, for. Uh, for the work that you are doing, Father, in the midst of us. We pray even this morning for those that are with us. We pray for the men that are a part of the Men in Pursuit group. We pray, God, that you are meeting each and every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you, God, that, uh, that, that as they have presented themselves before you, that even though the enemy might come against them, God, that the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against it, that, Father, that they're able to stand in you you with an assurance, God, that you are with them, with the confidence of knowing, God, that wherever it is that they go, that you're in the midst of them. That, Father, that in this time, that in these times, these times that are trying, these times that test their will, oh God, that these are not men that draw back unto destruction, but these are men that believe unto the saving of their soul. God, we declare in the name of Jesus over them, God, that you are putting the hedge of protection around them. We thank you, God, that the angels Angels of the Lord are encamped round about those that fear you. We declare in Jesus' name over the lives of those men, Father, that you called into this place, that you called to this time, that they were presented into the earth for such a time as this. Now, God, we thank you that even now, that even in the coming days, that even as we go forward, that you're laying open and prostrate those things, God, that they uh, that need to be revealed to them, Father, so they can carry out. Uh, your will within the earth, that they can carry out your plan that you've given them upon the earth, that God, we declare in the name of Jesus over them, that you began something awesome in them. And now we declare that the paraclete comes alongside of them and begins to be their teacher, Father. It begins to, uh, he begins to show them uh, who it is that they can be. And God, not only that begins to give them direction, begins to give them instruction. The Bible declares that a good man steps or order of the Lord. But Father, we thank you that you've ordained his steps, oh God. You've ordained our steps 
oh God, not only God, so that we can get to our destination, but God, so that we can be fruitful for the kingdom of God. And Father, it is our every desire to be everything that you've called us to be. Father, so even now, we set ourselves aside, we consecrate ourselves anew, we, we yield ourselves to you and to what it is that you have planned for our lives. We say, God, lead us into that place. We say, God, lead us into that place so that our lives, Father, will begin to be, uh, will begin to resemble those things, God, that you've called us to be attributes, uh, called to be attributes in our lives. Now, Father, we thank you that even now, that as the men have come forth, the men that are part of men in pursuit, that you're causing them, God, to operate in a place of unity like never before, that God, the love of God begins to flow from heart to heart. The Bible declares how good and how pleasant it is for men to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that is poured up on the beard of the prophet of the Preached, oh God, and it flows down into his garment. God, we declare in the name of Jesus that there is a level of connectivity among the men that are part of men in pursuit that uh that we have that we're cultivating like never before. We thank you, Father, that you have not uh that you have not hid from us from the things that you're desiring to take us into God. Eyes have not seen, neither has ears heard, neither has it been revealed. Uh, uh, neither had the entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them, but you have, uh, but you have revealed them unto us by your Spirit. And God, we just thank you that even now that you're revealing to the men that are part of men in pursuit, you're revealing to them the things that you've prepared for them, God. And now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would help us to rise up, God, with an assurance, oh God, that what you have promised, you are able to perform that God that we won't doubt you that we won't fall, that we won't shrink back from the place that you're calling us to but God that we say yes now God we ask also that you would allow your word to be like the fire shut up in our bones God that we cannot contain the great things that you are doing in us and through us so father speak to us with clarity oh God speak to us God so that we understand father speak to us God so that we can have boldness to declare the word of the Lord upon the housetops oh God father we thank Thank you that even now that you're causing us to be a city that is set up on a hill that cannot be here. And God, even now that you are causing us to come into places of transformation, and then God, that you are causing us to come out of those places renewed in our strength, Father, renewed in our vision and our purpose, oh God, renewed, uh, God, with uh, with a conviction, God, that we are able to preach the gospel without reserve, that God, that when we speak and when we preach this gospel live, will be transformed and changed, God, that you are going to do in the midst of us mighty, mighty, mighty things. So God, we praise you for that. We praise you for what you're doing. We praise you, oh God, for the way that you're operating and moving in the midst of us. And God, we thank you that even now, Father, that you're moving in the midst of the men, that God, even those attacks and those things that have come against them and begin to war against the things, uh, against the, uh, their minds, oh God, the enemy that has come against their mind, God, we cast down. We thank you, Father, that the enemy would like to them, like to fall them for, for them to fall in places of sin and in, uh, to miss the mark, oh God. But we pray even now that you're strengthening them, that their faith failed them not in the midst of their trials, oh God. We thank you, God, that even though uh, weapons form against them, they do not prosper. We thank you, Father, that these men go forward in you. They go forward conquering and to conquer. We thank you that even now, God, even though the the uh, that 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 uh, walls and ambushments may be may have been set up against these men, we thank you, Father, that they walk forth, they proceed forth without even worrying about those things, without the smell of smoke, God, uh, in their body, God. We declare in Jesus' name that because they walk with you, they recognize that they have strength, God. That greater is He that is in them than and he that is in the world. And even now, oh God, 
places that they've sinned. We thank you that they can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. Father, we thank you that you are strengthening them with all power, that God, that you are causing them to be mighty men of valor, that we declare over the men that are part of men in pursuit, that they are strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Oh God, we thank you, Father, that uh, that you're causing them to rise up and to become mighty men of valor. We give you praise and honor, oh God, because of what you're doing in the midst of us. Father, we thank you also for those men that have not come in yet. Those men that have not come into the kingdom, those men that have not come into the group, those men that are not born again, oh God, we begin to pray for them. We ask in the name of Jesus, the Bible says to look on the fields, they are white, all ready to harvest. We break every stronghold in their lives. We thank you, oh God, that the Lord of the harvest has been sent forth to minister to them that, that, that shall be heirs of salvation. We thank you that every stronghold in their mind begins to fall. We thank you, oh God, that you you begin to address every area that they are questioning. God, we give you praise. Oh God, that conviction is beginning even now to come into the hearts of those that do not know you. We thank you that even for the men that are part of men in pursuit, that you begin to cause us to come across the path of those that are uh, those that are not born again, oh God. And Father, we declare in Jesus' name that because we give them the word of God, that it begins to it begins to transform and change them, that they are born again by your spirit, oh God, that we begin to see the work of God in their lives because of the delivering of the word of God to men and women that are lost and that are without you, God. We thank you that the that you are drawing them by your spirit. The Bible declares that no man come to the Father except they are drawn. Now, God, we begin to ask you, we ask you, oh God, to draw men by your spirit, Father. Draw them into the place of salvation. Draw them into the place of victory. Draw them into the place, God, where they become a mighty army, oh God. And we just declare among these, uh, among this time and among the this nation, oh God, uh, an influx of men that are born again, an influx of men that are changed, an influx of men that are transformed. We declare in the name of Jesus that you are causing them, oh God, to see you even now high and lifted up, that God, the scales are beginning to fall off of their eyes. And Father, they are running to you, uh, declaring that they, they, are, they are in need of salvation. And Father, we honor you even today for that. We thank you again, oh God. We give you praise. We glorify your name. We thank you, Father, for the direction that you're causing us to move into. We ask in the name of Jesus. We see, Father, the path that you've called us to go into. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would begin to open up that path. Even though we've said uh, that uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no open word, oh God. Where there is no, the people cast off restraint. So Father, we ask that you give us vision, that you give us perspective, Father. We want to see where it is that we are going. Father, we declare in Jesus' name, God, that, that we know, God, where it is that you are you're causing us to go. That Father, that the obstacles that are before us are being removed out of the way. Or, and in those that are not removed, God, we overcome them. We overcome every obstacle that is set before us to enter into the place that you called us to enter into. And God, we declare in the name of Jesus that our lives are never the same because of what you're doing in us. We thank you, Father, that you've prepared us from the foundation of the earth. God and God, we we proceed forth. We thank you for the, for the vision. We thank you for the strategy. We thank you for the directions and the directives that you've given us concerning our life, concerning our ministry. And God, we say yes, and we move in that direction. We declare in Jesus name that because of where it is that you have desired for us to go, our lives will never, ever be the same again. We give you praise. We honor you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Oh, I forgot a couple of things. I got to go back. 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 So this morning, I also want to pray God for, uh, I also want to pray for my brothers. I want to, want to pray for my brother and my brothers in Arizona. We declare in the name of Jesus over that place. 
uh, the Apache, uh, White Mountain Apache Reservation, we are declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. We declare in that place that the sons and the daughters, uh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. We declare in the name of Jesus that you're rising up men and women of God to begin to speak the word of God in that place so that change will be uh, change will be the norm in that place. We declare in Jesus name that the spirit of suicide is halted in that place in the name of Jesus. We declare in Jesus name that the spirit of God reigns in that place. We glorify you, O oh God, for the word of the Lord that brings life. We thank you for the free flow of the distribution of the word of God in that place. Mighty are the works of your hand, O oh God in White Mountain Apache. We declare in the name of Jesus for Curtis Clark, God, that you're renewing him in his spirit and in his mind, God, that you're baptizing him afresh, God, in your spirit. God, even now, Father, as he pours into the teens there at White Mountain Apache Reservation, that they begin to catch fire like never before to spread the gospel throughout uh, throughout their schools and throughout uh, the Apache nation, God, throughout their families, and God, great transformation begin to take place. And I even pray even now a renewed knowledge of the healing power of Jesus that begins to be recognized by Curtis. We declare over him in Jesus name that he lay hands on the sick and the sick begins to recover. We declare miracles and signs and wonders in the midst of those that have forgotten about you, oh God. We praise you even now. Father, we thank you for Jor Joram. King Gore, uh, we declare in the name of Jesus over his life, God, that you've prepared him for this hour and for this time, God, that he is stretching forth his net, that many people are being won into the kingdom, that you've given him in the midnight hour, sweet times of rest, oh God, that he begins to rest in you like never before, that God, that you've given him a time, Father, that he begins to lay back in you, and in the morning when he rises, God, he is refreshed in you with a fresh word of on his lip. He begins to speak that word begin amongst the people that he ministers to and their lives are changed. We thank you for the resources and the streams of resources that you're bringing to him. We declare in the name of Jesus over him a recompense for the things that he has suffered, that God, that you're restoring to him the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm have destroyed. And we declare in the name of Jesus that even in areas where he did not expect it, God, that you're opening up streams, God, for him, streams of recompense, oh God, monies, God. We declare resources in the name of Jesus to him. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. We thank you even now for my brothers in Ghana, Pastor Albert and Pastor uh, Samuel. We pray over them. We pray over their families. We declare completeness and wholeness in their families, God. We declare in the name of Jesus as the enemy has tried to sneak in. We declare in the name of Jesus every activity that he has brought in the midst of them is spoiled. We declare in the name of Jesus, weariness has to leave them. A refreshing from the spirit of the Lord begins to flow in the midst of them. That father, that the word of the Lord that you've prepared for them begins to cause a refreshing in the midst of them. A renewed sense of vision, oh God, a renewed God fervor uh, about launching out into the things of God, a re renewed uh, uh, a renewed insight, God, into uh, into uh, into directives and directions that you would have them to go. We thank you that even now, that God, that you're giving them uh, the spirit of forgiveness, God, for even those that are around them that have uh, that have uh, that they might have ought against those that have uh, committed, uh, you know, uh, uh, transgressions against them. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you begin to cause them to be men of forgiveness, men of grace, men men of mercy, oh God. We thank you that because of that, you release them, that you cause them to have fresh, uh, uh, that you have caused them to have fresh directives, directions, oh God, for where they want to go. We thank you, Father, for the renewed love that you're pouring out upon them, that God, that the spirit of the Lord that visits them even in these times will cause the love of God to flow up out of them like never before. Father, we thank you even now for uh, for what you're doing for them, for, uh, for what you are preparing for them. Their lives will never, ever be the same. We declare that to be so over them in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you again, guys, this morning for being with us. 
uh, we declare to you that your life will never ever be the same. We uh, we honor the Lord in you. We honor uh, we honor God uh, you guys for being uh, here in the midst of us today, and we pray that God will continue to cause you to become everything that God has desired for you to be. He is bringing you into the place that He has desired you to come to, and uh, like uh, Ezekiel uh, thirty-seven verse. Uh, Ezekiel 37, verse number 10 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded uh, and uh, and they became, talking about the bones, and they became, uh, they came, they began, the, and then breath began to come into them and they lifted up uh, and stood upon their feet and they became an exceeding great army. So this morning, uh, we have prophesied to you and we declare that even this morning that breath has begun to come into you, that you are standing up on your feet and you are an exceeding great army. So we praise you and we thank you for that in the name of Jesus and fellows, we will see you tomorrow morning.